So in this video, we're going to be talking about skeletal structure and then the function of those skeletons, uh, specifically human skeletons is what we're interested in. But before we talk about human skeletons, let's talk about bug skeletons or the skeletons of arthropods or insects. And so I'm going to draw a little ladybug here. And our little ladybug being an arthropod has what is called an exoskeleton. And the exo in exoskeleton actually refers to the fact that this skeleton is outside of the ladybug. So exo is actually Greek for outside or external. Humans, on the other hand, we are vertebrates. And as vertebrates, we have this amazing network of bones located on the interior of our bodies. And so we have what are called endoskeletons. And endo is Greek for within or inner, referring to the location of the skeleton as being inside of our bodies as opposed to outside. Now, as humans, our endoskeleton performs a variety of pretty vital functions. The first of which is it supports our body and provides a framework for movement. So what does this mean? Our, our body is supported by the network of our bones which allows us to sit up and stand and provide some sort of structure for our body. And then the limbs of our body in particular and the various joints in our body provide a framework for movement that allows you to run around, to kick a soccer ball, um, to type on a keyboard. Another important function of our skeleton is that it protects our most vital organs. So if you look at the skull, for example, it houses our brain and the rib cage, it protects our heart and lungs and other organs. And the third function of our skeleton is that it performs a variety of physiological roles in our body, namely the storage of calcium and what is called hematopoiesis, which is the production of all of the cellular components within our blood. So our blood is made up of many different components, plasma, proteins, among other things, and the cellular components of our blood, which are red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are all formed within the bone marrow of our bones. And so those are the main functions of the bones that form our skeleton. Now, one way of classifying bones is differentiating between those that form the axial skeleton and then those that form the appendicular skeleton. Now, the axial skeleton is made up of our skull and rib cage and our vertebral column. That is the axial skeleton. It forms sort of the axis of our body, right, right in the center, down the midline. And then the bones of the forelimbs and our pelvis form what is called the appendicular skeleton. And so our four appendages form the appendicular skeleton, which is attached to our central or axial skeleton. Another classification system for the bones in our skeleton is the difference between flat bones and long bones. Now, what are flat bones? Some examples of flat bones are the bones that make up your skull, the different bones that make up your ribs, and then also the bones in your pelvis. And so flat bones really are describing the shape of the bone. These bones are made up of an inner spongy or cancellous bone, and then the outer shell is made up of compact bone. So there's an inner spongy cancellous bone and an outer shell of compact bone. And flat bones serve primarily to protect our organs and serve as a site for hematopoiesis. Now, long bones, on the other hand, some examples of those would be the humerus in your upper arm um, or, say, the femur in your lower leg. And if I draw a long bone out here, there are a few different terms to be familiar with um, when you're referring to different parts of a long bone. The long middle portion of a long bone is called the diaphysis. 
and then the end of a long bone is called the epiphysis and there is the small area of bone in between the two or in the middle of the diaphysis and the epiphysis is called the metaphysis and the metaphysis contains the growth plate which is present in the long bones of children and these long bones are made up of the same inner spongy cancellous bone with an outer shell of compact bone, just like flat bones. And these long bones really are the ones that provide a framework for movement like uh, we talked about before. And they also serve as a site of hematopoiesis. And speaking of hematopoiesis, where exactly does this hematopoiesis occur? I mentioned that it occurs in bone marrow, which is contained within bones. And there are two different types of bone marrow. There is what is called red bone marrow and then yellow bone marrow. Now red bone marrow serves as the primary site for hematopoiesis, which makes sense because the red blood cells from hematopoiesis actually make red bone marrow look red to the naked eye. So you can remember that red bone marrow is for blood or hematopoiesis. And you can typically find red bone marrow within flat bones and then in the epiphyses of long bones. And then yellow bone marrow, on the other hand, is primarily a site for fat storage made up of fat cells called adipocytes. And generally you can find yellow bone marrow within the diaphyses of long bones.